Michelle here and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. So I am going to be sharing some new yarn that I have gotten and what I plan to do with this new yarn. So the first set of yarn uh, is from a D stash that I got from my friend Cynthia. Hello, Cynthia. Um, yeah, she has excellent yarn taste. So I was able to get some really good yarn. And a lot of these are new to me brands. So let's get started. All right. So first up, we have this Mandala yarn. It's by Lion Brand. I have never used Mandala before, but I have uh, seen a lot of other people use it. So I assume it's, you know, pretty good yarn and I'm excited to use this yarn. And so I have uh, three of these. I guess you would call these cakes. They're already in cakes. So that's awesome. I don't think I've ever bought yarn that was already kicked up. That's cool. Okay, so um, each of these... I keep wanting to say skeins with their cakes. <laughs> Each of these are 5.3 ounces, 150 grams, 590 yards. Wow. Uh, 440 meters. That's a lot of yardage. Wow. Okay. Um, it is 100% acrylic. And, uh, oh, this is the color Finks. Let's see what else. So I'm guessing this is, oh, okay. It's a number three light weight yarn. All right, so I have my notes um, as to what I'm gonna do with this lovely yarn. So I want to make the basic V-neck crochet sweater by Ashley uh, Kornicke. Yeah, hope I'm saying that right. But that's the basic V-neck crochet sweater by Ashley Kornicke. And I already looked up the um, yardage that would be needed. And I feel like I have enough. We'll see. If I don't have enough, um, then I'll pick a different project. And the only thing about buying yarn that's de-stashed is the yarn might possibly be um, like no longer made. I don't know. I'd have to check the Lion Brand website. But if this is no longer made, then... I most likely won't be able to get more um, if I run out of yarn. So yeah, um, we'll see if that works. Okay, so I have a very large bin in front of me that I'm going to be popping this yarn into. Um, or I might just put it back over here. I don't know. If I start running out of room, you'll see me tossing stuff. But for now, I think I'm going to keep them over here. All right, let's see. Okay, up next, we have another mandala. Oh no, stuff is falling. Stuff is falling. Okay. I have two of these. Look at that. I don't know how well I showed this first one. But that's so pretty. Look at that. And the other one. starts with kind of a gray in the middle okay all right so like I said I have two of these and of course it's the same uh, yardage and meterage but the name of this is called centaur that's a pretty cool name so this is called centaur and for the centaur I have a couple of projects I would like to make with this one the first one is the cow neck tee by yay for yarn patterns or the Easy Crochet Summer Top by Crystal of Bag o Day. So either one of those, I think I will have enough yarn to make with it. Um, put together, this is almost 1,200 yards. So I think I might be able to do this. So we'll see. And stuff is toppling over. So I'm just going to put my stuff over here. If you hear anything, that's what it is. All right. Okay, cool. All right, so the next one we have, let's, ooh, squishy. Okay, so this is called Feeder Brook, or it's by Feeder Brook Farm. I have two of these lovely skeins, and each skein is approximately 100 grams, 260 yards. Um, I had never heard of this brand before, but it is hand dyed yarn. And the fiber content is 100% blue face luster. 
Oh my gosh, I love BFL yarn so much. I used to sell it in my shop a long time ago. I may have to bring it back. It's so great. Um, and the colorway is called eh, like eh, it's okay. I disagree. I think it's more than just eh. I think it is so wonderful. And um, what's great about hand dyed yarn is no two skeins are ever alike. That's why, you know, you have to, um, oh, what's it called? Um, alternate skeins. <laughs> it's good to alternate skeins a lot of times because this one has a little bit more purple in it. Whereas this one has a little bit more um, of the of the green in it. So that one has a little bit more green and this one has a little bit more purple. But I think it is going to be beautiful, whatever I make with it. And the recommended um, knitting needle size is a six. And I imagine that can go for crochet as well. All right, so I have two of these beauties and yeah, so what I want to make with these, I want to make the classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. And I would like to make the Sophie scarf by Petite Knits. And so since these both are slightly different, I think um, I'll use one skein each and that hat and scarf set would go together so nicely. I can't stop squishing this yarn. Oh my goodness. That is some soft and squishy yarn. And what I like about it is it looks hand spun. It looks hand spun to me. It really does. I think that's neat. Um, I have a drop spindle, but I don't use it and I need to. And I love to watch people use spinning wheels. Um, that that looks like a skill level that I'm not ready to tackle yet, okay? All right, so next we have, let's see, where is it? Oh, this one. We have the Barocco Noble yarn. This is as squishy as it looks. Uh, so this is, I don't see actual color name, but the color number is 2060. It is 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. It is 98 yards, 90 meters. And this is 98% extra fine merino wool and 2% polyester elite. Mm. It feels amazing. So this looks like maybe two ply. I don't know, I have never used this yarn before, but it is super chunky. And I was trying to see if they qual if they um, classified it. Ah, here we are. It is a number six, super bulky. So I was wondering if they had classified this as a bulky or a super bulky, but yes, this is a number six, super bulky. So with this, I would like to make the super soft merino hats by Pearl Soho. I think one skein of this will do just fine. So yeah, squishy. All right, let's see who's up next. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll do this one next. So this yarn is called Taki Yarns and it's called Zona, made in Italy. Okay, that's cool. It is 35% cotton, 28% wool, 26% acrylic and 11% nylon. It is 1.75 ounces, 50 grams per ball. And it is 119 yards, 110 meters. Very cool. Trying to see what weight this one is. The recommended needle size is a nine and the recommended hook size is an I slash nine, um, both 5.5 meters, uh, millimeters. I don't know what this one be classified as, but looking at it though, this is kind of hard because if you pull on it, it looks like it could be a DK. But I mean, it could be a worsted as well, especially if they're recommending um, a US nine needle, a uh, knitting needle or um, crochet hook for this. I'm gonna go with the worsted because that's usually around the range for that um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Look at that, that's so neat. 
I'm trying to figure out the construction of this yarn. It's not chainette. I don't know, that is odd, but it's cool though. And I love that brown. So what I'm thinking about making for this is the bank head hat. And that's by Susan Gourlay. I have made a bank head, bank head hat uh, many years ago, but I would love to make another one. That was when I first started knitting and I think it was huge. I made that hat so huge. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But here's that. All right, so let's see. Yep, that's the bank head. And I have a blue one. Here's the blue one. And everything is the same. There's no color names. Well, let me go back. So this is color uh, 011. And this is color 009. So this is the colorway in blue. And what I would like to make with this one is the Easy Peasy Hat by Tin Can Knits. So if you are a knitter or actually if you, maybe like you're not a knitter, but you wanna learn how to knit, or maybe you are a beginner knitter, um, or maybe you just want something that's a little bit more simple to work on, Tin Can Knits, excellent patterns. Um, they have a lot of great patterns for beginners. Uh, yeah, also Pearl Soho, they have some really good hats for beginners or those who just kind of want a project to just kind of relax with and not have to think too much about it. But yeah, that's that, that's so cool. And so I was trying to figure out, I mean, I know it has wool in it, but it almost looked like it has animal fibers. I don't know, or maybe that came off one of the other yarns, but anyway. That is so pretty. I love that blue. Okay, let's see what's next. Malabrigo. Uh, let's see, nope, not that one, not yet. Ah, here we are, okay. So this is Malabrigo, and this is um, on their Illusion base, or Rios, yeah. So it's on their Rios base, but the color is Illusion. And it is 210 yards, 100 grams, made in Peru. And this is pure merino superwash. So that's cool. I always love how they have like a story on the back of, uh, of these, where the name comes from and all that good stuff. So Malabrigo is quite, you know, it's a very common type of yarn. A lot of people use it. It's super, super squishy. It's just amazing. Um, this is, I believe this is worsted, doesn't say, it says it recommends a US 6 through 8, so, yeah, I don't know, it could be DK, but it, it looks worsted though, it really does, and it's 210 for 100 grams, so I'm thinking this is worsted. But it is so pretty. It's got like um, oranges, purples, a little bit of green, a little bit of like a blue steel in it. That's cool. That's so pretty. All right, so what I'm thinking of making with this is the scarf number one by My Favorite Things. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think this will look so great around my neck. It will look awesome. So that's that one. Okay, let's see. The next one, I have another Malabrigo, and this is in the colorway Zar, hmm, Zarzamora, Zazamora? I don't know. <laughs> um, so this is also on Rios, 210 yards, 100 grams, and it also feels like, or looks like worsted. Now these colors, Y'all know I love purple, y'all know. So there's some deep purples, blues, um, some greens there. Look at that green, that's amazing. I love this. Yeah, that looks awesome. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing or making with this one is the Empower People 
Cow by Casa Pinka. And I want to make the knitted version. I have already made the crochet version, which was by Busy Pink. So if you all remember in a previous episode, I made the Empower Cow um, already in the crochet version. So I really would like to see it in the knitted version. So yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, so let's see. Oh, the next one is this one. I have two. All right. So this is by Knight's Bridge uh, in the, on the barley base. I had never heard of this one before, or is that the color? I think the colorway name is barley. The fiber co. So is it made by the fiber co? Maybe, not sure. I have heard of the fiber co. Okay, so anyway. This is called, I'm thinking this is like the Knight's Bridge base and the colorway is barley and then it's made by the Fiber Co. That's what I'm gonna go with. So this one is quite luxurious, people. 65% Baby Llama, 25% Merino, and 10% Silk. It is 50 grams or 120 yards. And this is considered a lightweight yarn. Uh, recommend it. Knee, knitting uh, needle size or crochet hook size between a five and a six. Made in Peru. Very cool. So you all know I don't really do that good with alpaca. Um, so I was a little leery about trying the llama, but so far so good. I think the only thing is I'm not crazy about like little animal fibers sticking out a lot. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make with this. Um, if I don't do anything with it, I will definitely put it in a giveaway, but I'm going to hang on to this and think about it really hard as to what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to think about that one. All right. Let's see. That is all the, oh no, no, wait, there is more. There is more. Okay. So there are some non-yarn things that I also got from my friend Cynthia. I'm just going to show you all. I got this big bag of polyfill. So what I'm thinking of doing with this polyfill is possibly making some amigurumi. Um, I, I've never made amigurumi before. I used to make loveys back in the day where I would like stuff those with polyfill. But in terms of making like a whole amigurumi, I haven't done that. And so when I saw this bag of polyfill, I was like, yes, I'll take it. This inspired me to try out amigurumi. And it looks like there already might be like a little doll on the back. So um, I want to try making some amigurumi for the fall. I love candy corn. So I would love to make like a little candy corn amigurumi or... Um, a pumpkin or anything like that I think would be really fun and I'm going to use this polyfill for it so yeah that's what I'm going to do with that okay. oh this next thing I was so happy like have y'all ever had something in your Amazon uh wish list or Amazon shopping cart and then you find a better deal that's what's happened to me look now you all know I'm always blocking stuff. So I had had some, uh, what is it? Nitpicks, I believe it was nitpicks or knitter's pride. No, I think it was knitter's pride. Anyway, I had had some blockers in my uh, Amazon cart for the longest. And I was thinking about getting those because I really wanted some new blocking mats. The blocking mats that I were using, the, um, the big gray ones, they're actually gem mats. But they work just fine. They they do the job. I've blocked a lot of projects with those. Um, but I also use those mats at Fiberfest. And so now it is nice to have a whole bag of dedicated blocking mats that I can use just for blocking. So this is awesome. Look at that green color. That color is so pretty. So let's see. This is made by Knitting Love. I've never heard of the Knitting Love brand, um, but these are quality blocking mats. Uh, let's see, set of nine. Okay, so there's nine of these and each tile is 12 by 12. 
And if you put them all together, it makes a three by three foot block. Cool. So they're waterproof and steam resistant. Oh, okay, it looks like the colorway, the colorway, but the color of these tiles is called aqua. So that's that. All right, let's see here. What else, what else, what else? Oh yes, I have stuff everywhere. This is like, this is crazy. So I wanted to show you all this. I also got this from her. So um, as you all know, I dye yarn and I'm always looking for photo opportunities. And so I thought that yarn would look great on these mats or these, what do you even call these? Palettes. It would look great on, uh, on this wooden palette. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And it comes with the rope, so I could probably use it for something else. Um, but when I saw this, I was like, oh, this would do really wonderful with some flat, um, flat overlay photography. So yeah, I think that would look really pretty. I could just stack some yarn on it and take some pictures. Now I'm dropping stuff. Anyway, I could do that. Um, I could even stain this if I wanted to, like to a darker color, but I like this. I don't know. We'll see about staining it. The last thing I need to do is give myself another project. All right. And I have one more of these. I have this one, which also has a little handle. I love this one. It is a solid white painted palette. And I think yarn would look so good on this. You just do that, take some photos. It might be a little small, but I think maybe if I was like filming some minis or taking photos of some minis on it, either way, I think this would be great. So when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I need to buy this. Yeah. That's really neat. And what I like about it is I can paint it any color. And I also like how the back looks. You can put something in there and take a really nice photo with it. Even like finished projects, like a hat or something will look really nice in that. So I'm always looking for good photo opportunities and I saw it when I, um, when I got these palettes. All right. Okay, so that was all the stuff that I got from Cynthia. Now I want to show you all the yarn that I got from um, a yarn shop and oh, I'm looking at it right there. Another thing that I got from Cynthia, which I can't actually get in the frame, was I got a mannequin from her. It's such a good mannequin, and I've been looking for one like that, and I was so happy to find it. It is adjustable. Um, so yeah, I really like it. Okay, so now we can get to the yarn that I got at my local yarn shop. Okay, so let's see here it is I got a lot but it's really it's two main colors so these are um, the first colors that I got or the first color that I got I got this yarn at Freeman's creative I'll talk a little bit more about them in a second but I actually have four of these I am using the two other skeins on um, not a secret project, but I am going to be making a completely different separate process vlog video for that. And so this yarn is Cascade Yarn 128 Superwash. It's 100% Superwash Merino. And it is 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, 128 yards, 117 meters. Very cool. I like to say the meters and the, the yardage and all of that because I have viewers from all over. So they might use the metric system. This colorway is called Italian Plum. And uh, doesn't it look like a delicious plum? This is so good. It's so squishy. Oh my goodness. I know I say that about all of them, but this is really, really squishy. And this is a, I believe this is considered a bulky weight. Compared to this, yeah, this is a bulky weight. And so 
What I would like to do with this yarn is make the I Want Vest, uh, which is by Bash Harry, aka The Harry Knits on YouTube. It is a fantastic vest. I have been enjoying the process thus far. And when I finish it, I will definitely uh, upload a progress vlog on that vest. All right, so yeah. All right. Now, this next yarn, I saw it and I just went crazy. I got a lot. Yeah, I got a lot. Um, so this is Malabria and it is on their chunky base. It is a bulky weight yarn, 104 yards, 95 meters, 100 grams, and it is 100% merino wool. And so the colorway is called marine. So I got a lot. I got, there's three, four, and five, and six. So obviously I'm going to be making a big product or project with this. And so I want to make the, my first raglan sweater or no, my beginner raglan sweater. And it will actually be my first raglan sweater. Uh, it'll be my first knitted sweater. So I'm super excited about that. The pattern looks, I don't want to say it looks easy, but it looks like something that I could possibly handle. I like the construction of it. And so, yeah. So look at this blue. I'm still dropping stuff. Look at this blue. Oh, it's just, it caught my eye. I must have went in circles around that store, inside that store, like a bajillion times. And I kept coming back to this. It's so rich. This blue is just so rich. And you all know I love my saturated colors. Look how rich that is. Amazing. Love it. So I have six of these. I'm running out of room. Okay. So I got this yarn from Freeman, Freeman's Creative in Durham, North Carolina, which isn't too far from me. Maybe like an hour. Yeah, maybe like a little over an hour, but it's not, it's not too far. Um, it was an absolute pleasant experience being in that shop. The staff is so nice. The owner is so nice. Just everybody is so wonderful and so welcoming. And the thing is, I have not been to a yarn shop in over four years. And that's due to several bad experiences at yarn shops. Um, the customer service just wasn't that great. And so um, I must admit, I was a little nervous going to this yarn shop. Um, yeah, I was a little nervous, but I'm telling y'all, once I even just stepped on the sidewalk, my fears just went away. They opened the door. Um, it was just so welcoming from the moment that I stepped in. And while I was in the store, I just felt like I was in a different place. I mean, it's just so peaceful in there. And it's also a fabric shop. So they got fabric on one side, they have yarn on another side. Um, and then they have all these little accessories in the middle. Um, it, it's just an amazing shop. I didn't get permission to film in there. Maybe next time I will. So I don't have any footage, but, um, it's just absolutely incredible. It really is, uh, really, really is an incredible shop and I do recommend it. And yeah, I think it's wonderful. So anything else? Um, yeah. So just going back to the yarn, I've been trying to use up my stash and I had gotten my stash all the way up to, um, or all the way to just one crate. But now with all of this stuff, I definitely see myself filling up my second crate. And I was telling Cynthia, I was like, geez, this is enough yarn to last me well into the next year. So I'm trying to keep that in mind uh, when I'm buying yarn. I'm trying to make sure that I have a project in mind when I am buying yarn. So that is all that I have for you all today. Thank you so much for watching. I will have links in the description box below to all of my knitting supplies, crochet supplies, 
filming stuff if you're interested um i have a community tab and so i leave a lot of excellent questions there in the community tab if you're interested i love reading the comments that i get there uh let's see if you want to support my channel there are links below and so just thank you so much please like subscribe and click that notification bell so you are alerted when i post something i really do appreciate that and if you want to find me on social media, I am Queen's Yarn Boutique all over the social medias. Um, yeah. And so to continue watching, you can just click on the end screen that comes up next. And until next time, bye. Mm -hmm.